Animation and horror have a storied past, from the creepy demons and witches in Disney films which traumatised us all as children, to the bizarre surrealism of Jan Svankmeyer and the labyrinthine loss of self in Perfect Blue. Horror tropes, characters and concepts appear throughout the history of animation, but one of the most emotional and powerful recent examples is Paranorman. Coming from Leica, one of the two great stop motion studios, the other being Aardman, which we'll get to at some point, Paranorman is a story for children about the consequences of giving in to blind fear and taking the time to listen to each other. And, you know, death. Our protagonist, the titular Norman, doesn't really fit in. He's obsessed with horror movies, if you could imagine such a thing. He's quiet and introverted, and he can see dead people, something which gets him a lot of suspicious glares from his neighbours and open hostility from his father. In fact, in the first scene with Norman and his parents, we see this shot, which, like so much of Paranorman, is not only funny to look at, it's telling us something important. Norman's parents don't see IT to eye with him, what he can see nobody else can, and because of that, even those closest to him are unable and unwilling to treat him with any respect or consideration. And this theme of people not bothering to understand things that confuse them recurs throughout the film. Norman lives in the small town of Blythe Hollow, a New England tourist trap cashing in on the legend of a local witch. Yeah, it's basically Salem, Massachusetts. There are witch-themed restaurants and gift shops, and even a menacing witch statue in the town square, which brings us to one of the film's greatest strengths. It's one thing to show us how terrible the townspeople are with their idiocy and the cruelty that stems from their collective assumption that anything different is bad and must be treated with open hostility, but preaching to the choir is easy. Paranorman takes this one step further by actually involving us, the audience, in the same discrimination the story is warning against. We're shown this statue in this cackling storm before we know the truth about the Witch of Blythe Hollow, so naturally we assume that the Witch is the same evil old crone we've been presented with but she's not. In an emotional gut punch I honestly can't believe is in a kid's film, it is revealed that the witch was just a little girl who, like Norman, could speak to the dead, and the Puritan townspeople killed her for it. 300 years later, Norman is faced with the same puritanical intolerance and even plays into it himself, assuming, as we do, that the witch was evil when, really, she was just like him. Similarly, Norman's sister Courtney and his friend's older brother Mitch are both presented as vapid airheads with nothing of particular value to add to the group, but once again, we are shown that our assumptions are just as shallow and premature as the comically angry residents of Blythe Hollow. Although Mitch appears like a typical high school jock obsessed with his athletic prowess and little else... Did you see that? I know, right? I kicked that like a hundred yards! It turns out in the end that he's gay. Now, not only is that cool in its own right, because LGBT representation in movies and especially movies aimed at kids is something we need more of, but it goes to show that even though Mitch belongs to a historically marginalised group, that doesn't stop him from making the same snap judgments about Norman as everybody else does. Nobody is immune to this kind of thinking. Courtney, who has been such a typical movie teenage older sister for the whole film, constantly irritated by Norman's strange behaviour, stands up in front of the whole town and defends him, much to everyone's surprise, especially Norman's. By presenting us with familiar archetypes, Paranorman manages to implicate the audience in the very discrimination it's speaking out against, something which we can very easily smile and nod along to, but upon realising that we're just as likely to make snap judgements about people we don't know, maybe we'll think a bit harder about it next time. This idea of just sitting down and talking to someone before you judge them is even mentioned in this prescient line of dialogue right at the beginning. I'm sure if they just bothered to sit down and talk it through, it'd be a different story. It's telling then that Norman's power isn't flight or super strength, it's the ability to talk to people that nobody else can communicate with. In the end, the only person who can stop the witch's curse is Norman because he can talk to the dead. The very thing that made him a social pariah turns out to be the thing the town desperately needs. Norman's gift is being able to talk to people and everybody else's flaw is 
not taking the time to talk, which is funny when they form an angry mob and immediately start attacking the terrified zombies who are just trying to talk to Norman, but also really tragic, like when the residents of Blythe Hollow try to murder children because they refuse to take the time to understand them. Paranorman is great because of the fantastic craftsmanship and love that went into every frame and because it was made by people who've decided to dedicate their entire lives to hunching over in dark rooms, making minute changes to puppets and capturing their movement frame by frame, you get the sense that there's a real sincerity behind it that is often lacking in both horror movies and animated kids films. I love this film because it can help people who feel like freaks to feel more okay about being different difference and maybe feel a little less alone. The real villains of the film aren't any of the strange or outwardly monstrous characters, the evil witch is a scared little girl, the ghosts are benevolent and friendly, and the zombies are actually trying to help Norman. In fact, the zombies were much more villainous when they were still alive. These living people are horrible because they're scared of what they don't understand, not because they're bad people. Doesn't it bother you? Nah, you can't stop bullying. It's part of human nature. If you were bigger and more stupid, you'd probably be a bully too. It's called survival of the thickest. It's this lack of understanding and empathy that really causes all the problems in the film. The solution everyone except Norman has to placate the witch and prevent her wrath is to read her a fairy tale. Even the people who know the truth about her try to use a false narrative to keep the witch in the ground, like the town as a whole does by whitewashing the real story of the witch into something they can be comfortable with, turning it from a horrific tragedy into a crass tourist gimmick. Norman's solution is is still to tell her a story, but the real story of Aggie's life. And he succeeds because he understands how she feels, because he's been picked on and threatened all his life just like she was. But he also tells her that just because people treat you poorly doesn't mean you get to do the same. Aggie moves on when she lets go of her fear and anger. Norman saves the town and, although they're too busy making excuses for their insane behaviour to actually apologise to him, in the end, his family accepts him as they sit down together to watch a horror movie. So hey, why not find some people you care about and do the same?